Welcome back to the FS Elite Theatre. If you don't know already, my name is Callum and I am from the FS Elite team and it is a real pleasure to have you all here today. We have uh, had an amazing panel so far. If you haven't already had a chance to watch some of them previously, then head out to our website where you can re-watch the live stream. Not right now because you're about to watch one live. But I am very excited to hand you over to Mike from Flight Sim Coach and he's going to do an amazing job telling you exactly what he does and that is going to help you become a better virtual pilot. So over to Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Callum. Hello, um, as you said, I'm Mike with Flight Sim Coach. Uh, just about me in a nutshell, this pretty much explains it. Uh, that was the start of my flight sim career on the left, <laughs> Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, uh, excuse me, uh, 2000, and ProPilot was where I started. I think probably the first or second day I had my simulator, my mom told me the words I'll never forget, don't you ever think about becoming a pilot. Uh, you can see how that turned out. I think I slowly convinced her that I wasn't going to die the very first time I got in a Cessna. Um, and eventually she was actually brave enough to come with me on a on a jet that I flew. So um, it all worked out. But uh, basically, um, that's my flight sim story in a nutshell. Um, a bit more about my background. So um, I've... Uh, Done a bunch of flight instructing in Cessnas primarily uh, as a real world flight instructor. Um, also have a few years as a first officer on the Embraer 175. Um, but throughout my life, one constant's been flight simulation and always has been a, uh, a passion of mine. And what I've tried to do today is to combine that passion with my love for teaching into Flight Sim Coach. So what we do is we do remote uh, instruction for people around the world uh, that want to learn from real pilots. So today what I'd like to help inspire you guys with are ways to become a better sim pilot and how to fly your sim more realistically. So just as a uh, first question for you guys, um, when you guys fire up your sim, what's your preference, flying the airliners or general aviation aircraft? If, if you guys prefer airliners, uh, raise your hand as your primary preference, okay? So at least half of you and then general aviation. Okay, a little less than half I think, so great. And how about um, online air traffic control? Do uh, you guys typically fly using some sort of online ETC? Okay, so uh, probably about half then. Now, my first tip for you guys, if you don't already get involved in online ATC, this is, I think, the number one thing you can do to make your sim experience more realistic. Um, if you look here on the left, this is a picture, just a random, a uh, night that I found on VATSIM, which is one of the online air traffic control networks of the amount of airplanes you'll see in the sky. On the right hand is just a screenshot from FlightAware in real life. And you can see in real life, the skies are never empty. And the reality is as an airline pilot, the majority of what you do when you're just sitting there during a long flight has to do with air traffic control. You're changing frequencies, you're talking to controllers, uh, you're managing the route that ATC changes, uh, that ATC may give you various changes. So really for a long flight, that's uh, what it comes down to is dealing with air traffic control. So to be able to bring that element into your sim is gonna make it much more immersive and realistic. So even if you guys are already involved in ATC, one tip that I can give you guys to become a better pilot is actually a bit non-intuitive, which is to consider becoming involved in the air traffic control side of things. Uh, that's something that I got involved in when I was quite young. And uh, what it does is it helps you understand behind the scenes what an air traffic controller is thinking about and going through. And this, this actually helps you become a better pilot because you'll sort of know what to expect. You'll know more about what controllers find to be important when pilots are talking on the radio. And it gives you a whole new perspective. So I definitely would recommend that if you haven't considered it to also try the ATC side as a controller and that will improve your pilot skills as well. So uh, a couple other things about um, online ATC, just there's also the community piece of this as well. I mean, you guys are coming here to FS Weekend and you can see how awesome it is to be able to meet other people in the sim community. And that's exactly what flying on these online ATC networks lets you do. So it'll be a more kind of exciting and social interactive experience. Um, if you're not familiar with online ATC, these are the three options that are the, the biggest players. So you've got VATSIM, Iveo, and Pilot Edge. The nice thing is that um, although Pilot Edge is a paid service, they actually have a free trial. So all of these you can try completely for free. Um, Pilot Edge, though, like I said, it is a paid service that guarantees you ATC coverage during certain hours of the day. 
Okay, so the next topic I'd like to talk a little bit about is autopilot. So my guess is for those of you especially that like to fly the airliners, um, you probably are more comfortable with the picture on the right than on the left in general, is my guess. Um, but what I'd like you to think about is just, you know, there's kind of a spectrum of different levels of automation that you have when you're flying an airplane. So if you look at the very top, that's kind of the highest level of automation where you're flying, let's say, a fully coupled Cat 3 approach down to minimums. You're on autopilot all the way down on auto throttle. So that's kind of the most automated. And then on the other hand, you have, let's say, you're hand flying a visual approach with no autopilot, no auto throttle, and maybe you don't even have an ILS tuned in. So you're completely doing it visually as if you were flying a traffic pattern in a Cessna. And there's many different levels in between these two. Um, what I would challenge you to do is to try practicing your approaches or even your departures at these different levels of automation, and it will increase your skills and flexibility as a pilot. But one thing I will have you keep in mind, and actually the, uh, the panel discussion touched on this a bit, is that when we're talking about hand flying a large uh, jet, an airliner, um, this is something that's a lot more difficult in the sim than in real life, because a real life airline pilot um, they're not doing uh, everything all themselves. If they're hand flying the airplane as pilot flying, the pilot monitoring is going to be handling everything else. So making changes on the autopilot, doing it, all the radio calls, tuning the radios, um, and making FMS entries. So when you're flying your sim, you have to do all of this yourself. So give yourselves credit if you're able to manage this well. Um, but I do encourage you to try to practice this as much as you can. Because um, autopilot, it's great when everything is going well, but you know when you have these last-minute changes that ATC might request um, and things are getting difficult, that's where sometimes the best thing to do is just take the autopilot off and put the airplane where you need it to be uh, without having to do a bunch of clicking around on buttons in your FMS trying to you know, reprogram a route. So having those skills to, and confidence to take the autopilot off um, when those situation come, uh, situations come up is very important. And you can always put it back on after. It's not a one or done deal. So if you take the autopilot off, it's okay. You can put it back on later. So another concept that I think a lot of simmers um, don't think too much about is aerodynamics. So this is an area that you can try to learn more about to improve your skills as a sim pilot. So maybe you were flying along in your 737 and um, you encountered a situation where all of a sudden you get a stall warning out of nowhere, you get the stick shaker, um, or you realize that, hey, all of a sudden I'm much slower than I expected and why did that happen? So uh, a key concept for real pilots to really understand well is called angle of attack. And this is something that you might sometimes encounter, let's say you're flying the, the PMDG and you look at your PFD in the upper right, you can see, uh, I apologize, this pointer, <laughs> there we go, uh, you can see the angle of attack readout is right here. So if you wonder what this is, this tells you how close you are to stall. Um, so there would be a red line here that tells you the angle of attack where you're going to stall. And most airplanes, it tends to be somewhere around 15 degrees. Um, so it's important to understand, well, where is this angle of attack coming from? And the way that I like to think about it that may help you understand it very intuitively is um, it's the difference between where the airplane is pointed and where the airplane is going. And what I mean by that, so let's say you look at a heads-up display. This is what we see on the left here. Uh, this is the pitch attitude of the airplane, where the airplane is pointed. And this uh, little circle here is where the airplane is going. This is your flight path vector, or in other words, your vertical speed. And the difference between those two is your angle of attack. So that's what we see here. The difference between where this circle is and where the pitch attitude is, this is your angle of attack. So when you understand it this way, you avoid a trap that many pilots fall into that causes a, a safety issue in real life. Or you know, if you're in your sim, maybe a surprise where maybe you're making this turn and your pitch attitude is actually pretty close to level flight. But you're actually really close to stall, perhaps because the airplane is descending and maybe 
you have some load on the wing. Uh, you're, you're, you're in a turn, let's say. So uh, very important for real pilots to understand, and I would encourage you to think more about this as well um, when you're flying. And if you're at least flying the 737, you should have this readout here in the upper right. Um, and uh, usually around 15 degrees or so is kind of the maximum you would ever want to, uh, to see this, much, much lower than that, ideally. Another area that I feel simmers um, often overlook is fuel planning. So in real life, uh, airlines, they don't want to carry any more fuel than they need to because it costs money to tanker around gas that you're not actually going to need for your flight. Um, this here is an example of a flight that I did in the Embraer from Chicago to Washington. Um, and you can see that, that you know when you have situations that come up where you have some weather, let's say, or some sort of unexpected delay. If you haven't thought about having enough fuel reserves, this could be very bad if you plan to go in a straight line, but you actually had to go, in this case, all the way up into Canadian airspace. <laughs> so um, these are the situations that happen in real life that in your sim, maybe it's a matter of you're flying on bat sim and there's some unexpected delays, some holding patterns. Have you planned all that out? Now, I think what happens for many simmers is they don't really think very much about fuel and they just you know maybe accept whatever the default is or they you know just load up full fuel every time which is fine but not very realistic because we're always at the airlines uh thinking about you know what is the actual minimum fuel that we really need to avoid having to carry around anything extra um, so one tool that you guys can use would be SimBrief. Um, so this is a, a way that you can do your flight planning that will give you a very detailed, uh, this is called a flight release, and it will you know, kind of have line by line all the different factors that determine how much fuel do you need before you actually push back from the gate. Uh, so that's going to be your block fuel. And actually try to load that into your sim, and you'll see that once you have this constraint that this is all I've got. <laughs> That's not going to last forever. You have to think about many more things during your flight that otherwise you might not. And you need to think, well, can I really, you know, hold for you know this many minutes if ATC is giving me delay vectors or making me hold for so long? Uh, can I actually do that? So it, it just creates another layer of challenge compared to if you always just load up full fuel. Same thing goes if you fly a uh, smaller airplane. Now, at a lot of flight schools, you'll just you know get the airplane with full tanks, so that's common. But you can challenge yourself by figuring out, well, what is actually the minimum fuel that I would need, and then load that, and then see how that changes your mindset about thinking about, is there an unexpected headwind? Um, all these different factors that will affect your fuel burn. OK, so uh, the next thing I'd like to cover is um, other resources you can use for, you know, kind of improving your knowledge and pilot skills. Um, I suspect most of you guys use YouTube extensively, looking at tutorials and this sort of thing, um, which is awesome. Um, if you prefer to, you know, kind of read some of the same sort of material that real pilots use, there is a lot of stuff available as well as the source material um, that will help you dive deeper into various things. Like, for example, the FAA in the U.S., they have all these free, um, basically, books online that you can learn about topics like weight and balance, for example, is one topic that a lot of simmers really don't think about at all, but um, could be interesting to learn just some basics about. Um, or even airport markings. Do you understand what all of the taxiway um, markings and signage means as you're flying along online um, to be able to correctly stop at the right point. So all these things you can you know, kind of read about as if you were going through real flight training with some of these resources. If you're more into you know, learning about, hey, what are the, the jet pilots learning as they go into an airline training environment, then this book here, it's uh, not the cheapest book, but it's actually very well uh, written and engaging. Um, everything explained for the professional pilot, um, consider something like that. And then if you're really trying to dive into a specific type of airplane, um, let's say you're really into the A320 or 737, whatever the case may be, you can find uh, very detailed information. Of course, some of the add-on manufacturers will publish this, but um, if you just Google for you know A320 FCOM, that's the term that you want to use for an airliner. It's Flight Crew Operations Manual. Um, if it's for a smaller aircraft, then typically looking for, uh, let's say, Cessna 172 POH, um, that would be a way to get uh, these books that the, are in the actual airplane, the you know perfectly detailed flight manuals. So um, I encourage you to look for this if you're looking to bring your procedures and realism to the next level. So 
next, um, you know, for, for me, I learn best by, by doing. And uh, I expect many of you guys are the same way. So what I'd like to talk about is just the basic process for how you can actually improve your skills in your sim in some specific areas. So one key thing that I would encourage you to do is to use replay mode because we have to figure out, okay, what are the problems for us before we can actually fix anything? So um, in both X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator, there are replay modes built in. In Microsoft Flight Sim, you actually have to go enable an experimental option as of the last I checked. But um, once you do that, let's say you, you do a flight, you do your landing, then you can go back and replay it and watch it with you know a fresh, relaxed set of eyes and be like, hey, here's an area that I found that needs some work. Maybe I keep floating very far down the runway before I touch down. I need some work on you know hitting my exact touchdown point. That's a great challenge you guys can uh, make for yourself to always try to land you know on the touchdown zone markers, let's say. So, um, okay, we've identified a problem. And then the next step would be to, you know, try to figure out a very specific uh, way to fix it. So maybe if your issue is that floating during touchdown, we can set up a scenario that we can save and then go back to you again and again and again without having to wait for our whole next flight. Um, and you can do this again in both simulators, X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Sim. This is what it looks like in X-Plane to save a scenario. Basically, we would uh, maybe fly one approach, wait until we're at 50 feet, let's say. We would save that scenario, uh, call it uh, you know 50 foot, you know 737, save it, and then we can go back and try it again and again and again without having to do the entire flight. So for real pilots, this is one of the biggest benefits that flight simulation offers is the ability to do this targeted practice. Um, and you can use that to your benefit as well as a sim pilot to really hone in on a particular area that you feel needs work. Okay, so the next uh, piece I think that's important is getting feedback because there are certain things that no matter how many times you watch your replay, you might never realize that, hey, this is something that I'm, uh, that I'm sort of missing or not doing quite right. Um, so we all have these blind spots as pilots and having someone else there to you know, say, hey, here's something that I think you could improve on is, is super helpful. Um, so if you're in an online community uh, and you use shared cockpit software um, or Discord, that's a perfect way to go about getting this sort of feedback. Um, two of the options uh, that are available. So this is for Microsoft Flight Sim. It's called Your Controls. And uh, it was touched on in the panel discussion that you know this may be integrated or hopefully will be integrated into the, the Sim, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim by default in the future. But uh, this is an add-on that lets you basically hook up to separate simulators, uh, different, you know, wherever you guys are in your world with your, your flying buddy, and then you can actually share the cockpit together, um, you know, whether it's for, you know, critiquing each other's flying or actually to practice that multi-crew member aspect that I touched on as well, being able to have one pilot focusing on flying the airplane and the other pilot doing all the other stuff, the pilot monitoring stuff, you know, doing the radio work, managing the autopilot. Uh, so this is for X-Plane and then, there, excuse me, yeah, for here is X-Plane. Um, it's called Smart Copilot, same idea. Um, the trick with these is with some add-on aircraft, there can be issues with getting everything to link up perfectly. But um, it's something to definitely try out if you have any flying buddies that you'd like to fly with. Uh, where we come in at Flight Sim Coaches, if you don't have anyone that you, you know, already uh, you know, fly with in your community and you'd like to get a real world perspective, uh, what we offer is the ability to take a live lesson with a real pilot. So um, that's what we do at Flight Sim Coach. Uh, so we have a group of about uh, 13 instructors that are around the world. Uh, they have experience in actual aircraft for, ranging from the 737, 787, um, A320, and of course, all sorts of general aviation aircraft. And you just share your screen with them and uh, you take a lesson as if it were we're real life. So um, I kind of like to think of it, at least for the sim enthusiast community, as it's like your human version of a, uh, <laughs> a study level add-on where you have someone with that detailed system level knowledge and procedural knowledge that can tell you, hey, here's actually how we, we do it at the airlines and we can help to improve uh, the realism of your flights that way. Um, and, you know, some reasons why folks like to do this. So, you know, it's more engaging, of course, than watching YouTube tutorials to be able to fly with an actual pilot and, you know, have that uh, kind of human connection um, and also more efficient because, you know, sometimes it just takes uh, an expert to, you know, look at your flying for, for, you know, 
20 minutes and we can identify many things that will help you uh, down the line very quickly uh, just with that um, eye of experience. And uh, you know, some ways that you can use uh, these, this remote instruction service, um, you know, one might be kind of just a basic skills checkup. If you're a simmer that you would like to get this perspective on your flying, you know, you can hire one of the instructors to come along for a short flight and uh, be able to give you a basically almost like a little check ride report on, hey, here are the areas where I think you can improve that you can study up on your own. Uh, so that's one way, of course, if you're thinking about taking uh, real world flight lessons in the future, or you're maybe already a student pilot, then you can use our instructors to be able to um, prepare for those lessons. That way you get to the airplane, you've already practiced the important things and that saves you money once you're actually doing your flight training. Um, and uh, yeah, we also you know have some people that come to us and maybe they're the type of people that know they'll never fly an airplane in real life, but they want the experience of learning to fly from step one all the way up through getting their virtual PPL or instrument rating. So that's that's kind of another way we've seen people uh, work with our instructors. And then, of course, uh, some people just want to get variety uh, from their flight sim experience. And maybe you've never flown a helicopter. Um, we've got you know a 10,000-hour helicopter pilot that's available to, to give instruction in helicopters, glider pilots, um, you name it. So that's another way that people like to use it. And of course, they're all sim experts, so they can they can help you with setting up your sim uh, using the different features that are available. Thank you very much. But before you run away, please join me. Sure. Uh, does any question anyone have any questions for Mike at all? Uh, yes. Sure, sure. Um, so the instructors are primarily in the U.S. right now. We do have a number that are in Europe, but really the time zone issue, it uh, works out because we have some instructors that in the U.S. they are available during normal business daytime hours. Uh, we have one instructor that's in um, Colorado that is available very late. <laughs> so, you know, he's kind of available for, you know, let's say, I think people in Australia it works out well for. So but between the variety of each instructor's uh, personal availability and the locations of instructors with some in Europe, some in East Coast time, Pacific, it does end up working out. Fantastic. I'm afraid that is all the time we do have. But if you have a question, please come find Mike. He is in the Sim Market Hall, and I'm sure he'll be happy to uh, to take your answers as well. So Thanks. please put your hands together again for Mike from Flights and Coach. Thank you.